Hey everyone, welcome back to Mission Impact Series with Tracy and Ty. We're still on number three of how do trends affect social impact businesses. We talked about board members, we talked about donors and contributors, and now we're going to talk about volunteers because trends affect how volunteers volunteer for you, or if you can even get volunteers, let's be honest, right? <laughs> so um, if this is your first time catching us, my name is Tracy B. Allen. I'm the owner of TVA Consulting Group, where I help social impact businesses change agents, right? <laughs> to design, build, and fund their social ventures so that they can live the lifestyle that they desire while impacting their community. All right, my name is Ty Boone. I'm owner of Ty Boone Enterprises. I work mostly with nonprofit organizations, helping them to move from startup and struggle to sustainability and success. And girl, we love volunteers. We love volunteers, but you yes. know what? Gas is one hundred dollars a gallon. <laughs> it's hard out here to get yep. people over here to give you their time, and you ain't giving them no money. That's mm -hmm. just that's kind of how it is, right? Yeah. Um, volunteers are still there. They're still plentiful. Um, a lot of universities colleges and places like that they'll they'll assist you with you know providing you volunteers i think it really matters you know how strong a volunteer you need and what you need for them to do and what you mm -hmm. have to to train we talked about training a, a you know a couple series ago um do you have that kind of effort to put into a volunteer number one mm -hmm. and then number two do you have is if there's no resources for them it's going to be highly unlikely if that's just going to be phoning all over you to volunteer because you're right. Well, I mean, seriously, I mean, if you have volunteers that are driving into a facility that you have, you know, do you, are you going to give them mileage? You know, you're not paying them to be volunteers, but are you going to reimburse them for the gas that they took to come to your um, organization? Do you have that capacity to do that? So if you don't, one of the things that I tell people is the best thing to do is to look at people who are in and around the neighborhood that you serve. Instead of having someone come from a different town, you may need to have a volunteer fear in your neighborhood and try to tap in to the local resources that I'm talking about people in walking distance. Because this is a big problem right now. Mm -hmm. Is not people not they're not getting the gassing up their car to come volunteer. Mm -hmm. Like they have to be very well established financially to want to do something like that. And most of the volunteers that volunteer at places are not that. And that's just statistical fact, yep. right? Most of the volunteers are like Pete Ty talked about people who have been in that situation, came out of the situation, and now they're doing a little better. They've graduated, but they ain't, they don't have a PhD, <laughs> right? They have a high school diploma, right? So, or they may have a bachelor's degree, but they're not at PhD level, right? Mm -hmm. So being cognizant of that. So if you have the ability to have some of that volunteer work being done remotely, that is something that you need to talk um, think about. That's what we talk about, SOPs and all of that stuff, changing up some of your bylaws, looking at them, revamping them, how you, how you deal with your not only your board members, your volunteers, your staff, and the clientele that you're serving, right? We want to make sure that we're being as green as possible in our interactions with people, right? Mm -hmm. So we don't need to fly all over the place. We don't need to, you know, um, what do you call it? Have people get in their cars for, for nothing, just come and have a meeting. You can do that in Zoom. Oh, you right. don't like Zoom? Oh, well, this is a new age. This is what we're doing. So we're going to have a Zoom meeting. Oh, call me on the phone if you want to. But that is just kind of how it's being done. Um, mm -hmm. So you need to be very cognizant of that. And, you know, sometimes even to like the volunteer hours, the hours that you want people to volunteer because they have lives of their own, too. And they're giving up of their time to come and give back to the community. But I see a lot of organizations where they run their volunteers ragged. Mm -hmm. And um, that's not a good thing. Yeah, and so. volunteering is a service. It shouldn't stress out your volunteer. Like you, mm -hmm. some people, like you said, they run their volunteers ragged. The volunteers, like I, I volunteer once. I don't ever want to volunteer ever again in my life because <laughs> those people over there at that business, they was they tripping, right? They, I right. mean, understanding what roles your volunteers play, and we'll, we'll probably talk about this in another session at some point in the future. But mm -hmm. the jobs that you have them doing. Um, do they make sense? Are are they allowable for something mm -hmm. the volunteers are not even supposed to be doing? Right. Or what what that what those things are, and just being you know being understanding mm -hmm. of, of times you know the gas mental health all mm -hmm. kinds of 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you have to take into consideration and you have to be careful and you have to really understand that a volunteer is give they're giving of themselves. Mm-hmm. They're really not giving anything in return. So you have to appreciate that. Right. And not putting your volunteers in dangerous situations, mm-hmm. making sure that your volunteers are always safe as possible, especially if you're doing, you have volunteers that are going out into the community to do outreach work. You want to send them out in teams of two, mm-hmm. you know, making sure that they have an adequate cell phone because depending on the economic status of your volunteers. So there are a lot of things, especially in today's day and age that you really need to take into consideration because people are on high alert, man. Like people are on edge. They may knock on the wrong person's door and you know, it turns into a bad situation. Do not send your volunteers out in um, in singular in singularity. You need to send them out in peers. And somebody gotta be a strong person in the pair. You can't send two people out who are meek. <laughs> you know, it just doesn't That's work. Right, right. <laughs> you have to look at the volunteers, look at their strengths, look at their, you know, their weaknesses and pair them up accordingly and make mm-hmm. sure that they mesh as well because then that can become a whole other thing. Mm-hmm. And though you yeah. <laughs> anyway for your businesses, before you get, you also have to make sure that you have insurance. I was going to talk when about you're that. Yeah. The volunteers. I mean, you, you ha- you're supposed to have it anyway, but a lot of y'all are not doing it, right? But you got to make sure that you're covered and that you're covering them. Mm-hmm. You know, representing your organization, number one. So what, if something happens in the name of your organization, then you're liable for that. Mm-hmm. Then for them, even if they're just coming to the event, putting up a box, what happens? Mm-hmm. What happens if you're not covered? Mm-hmm. And people are not thinking about that, Tracy. No. Like, you have to fuss for days. Like, guess what? Why? Why isn't your business insured? And you got fifteen events over the summer. Yeah. <laughs> you got, I have a client. I have. I have a client like that who's constantly having events and has never had insurance for the business. I was like, you are so lucky. But moving forward, you will have insurance because that is a very dangerous game that you're playing. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's only but so far you can go, and then it catches up with you. So. Yeah. So that's it for volunteers, guys. Um, Thank you for joining us. So the next last thing we're going to be talking about in this series is how trends affect grant makers, because it does affect where your money comes from. All right. Till then. Bye, guys.